I think I need to ask you too. Your Cody Fui, your F W E E. Yeah. There has to be a story behind that. And like all all usernames, it's not a good one. Well, sorry, I don't mean like it's bad. I just mean it's not interesting. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so I've been Cody Fui since uh, the before the age of mankind. Um, and actually, when I uh, shout out to uh, Jay Zubricki, uh, audio engineer at GCR, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he always makes up even more fun nicknames based on nicknames, and he calls me uh, Fweedum. Um, and he says, let Fweedum ring, and that makes me crack up every time. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever got a tattoo, it would be let freedom ring and it'd be tattooed right on my forehead. <laughs> uh, but I'm too afraid to get a tattoo. All right. I haven't decided if I never want a tattoo or not. I came really close to uh, we found some tool that translates into yellow frame, which is like the Doctor Who language. I'm thinking about getting like daughter's name or initials or something in yellow frame somewhere, like on the arm or Small back or something. Someone, like, or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think at one point I'm going to just make a whole just identity change. I'm going to dye my hair blonde. And I'm going <laughs> to get a nose ring. And that, that time might be coming sooner rather than la- later too. So, I feel like if you go blonde, you got to go like the 80s like hair metal band. Like style of blonde like you just got to go long long oh long uh so you know you're speaking to like the 13 year old of me when i started playing guitar and was listening to like van halen i want to get a perm but i i will never no not doing that my hair was i've i've had my hair down here before and i hated it um i'm a picky guy you know what i i just shaved today i know this isn't we were supposed to be coding but you know what i just shaved today because i was getting my like beard in my my mouth that's the worst. Uh, there is nothing trim. worse. Like, you, just, you, just, you just cut it. Yeah, see, I'm all or nothing, apparently. Because I just... <laughs> I mean, this, this is me shaved, so it really it's not that bad. But um, it's like the same thing with the hair. As soon as it... As soon as I get to the point where, like, it starts, like, irritating my, my face, uh, I'm like, nope. Gotta cut it. Yeah. This is too long for me. I need to cut. I need to shave my head. Gotcha. Yeah, I grew my hair out long once as well, uh, but I have curly and wavy hair, so I actually have closer to oh. an afro. Yeah, so <laughs> there was oh, nothing in sick. high school that I could do to style my hair. <laughs> it was just a yeah. wild mess. That that sounds like something. Yeah, I mean, I want to get a perm at one point. So you don't? <laughs> no, I know I don't. I know I don't. I know I don't. <laughs> that was that was me at thirteen when I was very impressionable and I was watching videos of hair metal bands and it was. Uh, bad and i'm glad i got out of it before i did <laughs> i mean i guess i tried it once i tried the long hair once totally fine but all right let's kick it off yeah let's kick it off all right welcome to the show everybody um we're gonna write some code today um and hang out we were just we're i'm in like a hangout mood right now so if we write code that's gonna be a good thing uh but I'm I'm in a good you know it's like 80 degrees right now I'm in Buffalo New York, um, it's about to there's going to be a crazy storm where then it's going to immediately hit back down to like 50 and it might snow tomorrow, so you know I'm just living life to the fullest right now. I feel like you have the storms I got because I was under tornado watch last night for five hours. Uh, it was 80 yesterday, had the storm and and everything last night, and now it's 50 today, and like. So it's like literally everything you just said. It's like you're a day behind me. <laughs> like anything that is weather exactly related. Exactly. What's going on? <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So what? This is uh, week two. I just wanted to call out. Like we do have our Twitter handles down below us. Uh, if you want to follow us, reach out, talk to yeah. us on Twitter. Have questions. Happy to happy to have that. Um, but with that, we want to jump into the problem we're solving today. And you and your fancy car. Yes. Yeah, I mean, ice latte because eighty degrees. Yeah. So, um, so today I think we were looking for some fun things to do, and you know what's really fun are the advent of code problems. Um, and unfortunately, this year I only got to like two or three of them. 
Um, I know I had some friends that did most of them, but so I was like, Hey, let's, let's look some of those. And, uh, this one seemed pretty fun just by the due nature of the problem. Uh, so that, I think this is day two. I mean, we, oh, you got yeah. it up. Yeah, it is day two. Okay. I'm not crazy. Uh, I should probably look at the screen. Day two of but, last year, 2022. Yes. Um, so this would be fun. Um, I know a lot of people like compete in these. This is going to be us just having fun trying to solve it and play around with the problem. But it's rock, paper, scissors. Uh, we're, we're basically going to be scoring a rock, paper, scissors game uh, from the looks of it. But um, yeah, we can read through the problem. Um, I know it's kind of long, but I think the story's kind of fun, though. So I don't mind reading it for a little story time. Yeah. The elves began to set up camp on a be- on a beach. To decide whose tent gets to be closest to the snack storage, a giant rock-paper-scissors tournament is already in progress. Rock-paper-scissors is a game between two players. Each game contains many rounds. In each round, the player each simultaneously chooses one of rock, paper, or scissors using a hand shape. Then, a winner for that round is selected. Rock defeats scissors. Scissors defeats paper, and paper defeats rock. We know this game. Uh, if both players choose the same shape, the round instead ends in a draw. So appreciative of the help yesterday from the problem that we don't have context on, uh, one elf gives you an encrypted strategy guide. Um, that, they say, will be sure to help you win. The first column, column on the left, is what your opponent is going to play. A for rock, B for paper, and C for scissors. The second column, suddenly the elf is called away to help with someone's tent. Um, the second column, you reason, must be what you should play in response. X for rock, Y for paper, and Z for scissors. Winning every time would be suspicious. So the so the responses must have been chosen, or carefully chosen. The winner of the whole tournament is the player with the highest score. Your total score is the sum of your scores for each round. The score for a single round is the score for the shape you selected. One for rock, two for paper, and three for scissors. Plus the score for the outcome of the round. Zero if you lost, three if the round was a draw, and six if you've won. Since you can't be sure if the elf is trying to help you or trick you, you should calculate the score you would get if you were to follow the strategy guide. For example, suppose you were given the following strategy guide, so A, Y, B, X, C, Z. This strategy guide predicts and recommends the following. First round, your opponents, your opponent will choose rock A, and you should choose paper Y. This ends in a win for you with a score of 8. 2 because you chose paper, plus 6 because you've won. Oh, there's double scoring. Interesting. Uh, in the second round, your opponent will choose paper B, and you should choose rock X. Ah, X. Uh, this ends in a loss for you with a score of 1 plus 0. The third round is a draw with both players choosing scissors, giving you a score of 3 plus 3 equals 6. Um, and in this example, if we were to follow the strategy guide, you would get a total score of 15. 8 plus 1 plus 6. So what would your total score be if everything goes exactly according to your strategy guide? All right. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah. It sounds like a lengthy problem. Maybe you want to start breaking it down in the discovery the discovery tree. Yes. Um, and I think what's what so the one way that I like to work backwards too from this problem because I mean at, at advent of code, there is the constraint where basically you have to solve a problem, but then they're going to give you um, an input that's usually way too big to do by hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes just look, cause even reading this, I, I like, as the input, the strategy guide, I, th- I think it is. Um, but I, um, so if you, if you go back to advent of code for a sec sure. and, um, if you're signed into GitHub, if you click the GitHub link, it should just sign you in immediately. I don't know if it's gonna, it, it did it for me. Uh, I don't think I want to do that. Okay, that's fine. Well, I have it, and it is the strategy guide, so um, I can. Once we get back into the into code land, I can paste it. But I have an example of the input. So the input is the strategy guide. So maybe we start off with that in the discovery tree. Yeah. So take in strategy guide. Yep. Let's input that. Uh... 
this probably means let's return a hard coded score. Yeah. And then I want to put some like some just um definition stuff over here too. So like kind of a, a domain map, as you will. So strategy guide has two columns. Um left column, opponents, they can't spell column. And the right column is our column. Yeah, our response, yep. Yeah. Hey, and then the way we score is there's two things that matter. Um, so actually, we're we'll going to score. So it seems like the scoring, and yeah, sorry, I'm going off the screen here. Um, no, the scoring the is um, based on what um, choice. So rock equals one. So actually, is rock, is rock equal to one? I think so. Rock is one, paper two, scissors three. Oh, scissors is three. Okay. Paper two. Yeah, and then it's what outcome is. Yep. Of the round. And they said this is a win equals six, lose equals zero, and draw is equal to three, right? Yep. Okay, awesome. cool. So that is basically the, I would say, the domain of what we're solving right now. So maybe the first thing is if we just, why don't we just bring this up to the uh, the discovery tree as well and I'll... Eh. Yeah, yeah, we can do no. that and then we can break out what we want from it. Sure. I think that's a good idea. I will copy it at least in that way. Yeah, we can slice it. Yeah. So maybe the first the first part of score is to just score based on choice. Love that, yeah. yeah. On choice, I cannot spell this morning. Yep. We're based only on choice, and then then we want to score on outcome. And it's choice for both players. So if both players choose scissors, for example, it's three plus three, six. Um, for for choice. Well, yeah, that would equal a draw. No, so it would be, oh, we want to score. For, so we're returning a score for both players? Or are we just going to, I thought we were just doing a score for ourselves. No, well, it's, um. actually, yeah, I think you're right. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. This is always the fun thing. That's why we talk through it and we make sure we're, we understand. If you're yeah. doing it in a vacuum, we may, uh, may be doing it wrong. All right, I'm reading the example they're giving. Um, the first round, your opponent will choose rock A, and you should choose paper Y. This ends in a win for you with a score of eight, two because you chose paper, plus six because you won. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah, so it's just your score. So your I imagine score. this. Thank you. I imagine our first look will be well, we played paper, so we get two, and our score will become two, and then then we'll actually evaluate. We played paper, they played this. What is our is our win loss draw? I'm going to say your <laughs> score too, just so I don't get confused there. But yes, love it. Um, and honestly, I think this is good enough for us to just jump into if we want. And then we can figure out what's what's remaining after. Yeah. So do we just want to take the, the simple case? Just uh, I, Yeah. You got those three things? I think I think we could, we could go. So what? how do we prime myself last? So I think another interesting avenue we could go is... Um, by doing the cho the choice by doing this choice of taking going for the entire strategy guide as input and then doing it is sort of an outside in um level of development where we're basically starting right from the the u in this case like the u user interface level which is going to be a file um mm -hmm. 
Another way we could, it could be interesting is starting actually just with one of the scoring things is like us test driving a tiny piece of the solution that we know we need. And then we can figure out how to wire it up later. I'm, I'm fine either way. Just wanted to call that out. Could be interesting as it'd be different than last that time we coded. Yeah, it's interesting that we find, uh, I mean, I think in the TDD world, right, that's London versus Chicago style testing is kind of the nomenclature that they've given us. Sort of. I think that it's kind of um, sort of related, but I also see just some people gravitate towards one form of that TDD style of outside in, starting from the user interface, going in or going inside out, starting with a small box, a small focused piece of the problem, and then carving their way out back to the user interface. Mm -hmm. um, but even if we don't do, do anything, I think it was worth calling that out. Yeah. We can start to the bottom level. I'm good with that experiment. Let's let's try that experiment. We'll and we'll just what we can do to keep it so we still get to where we're at the user interface level, so that we're kind of delivering value. Um, so we're thinking this. We'll do that, and then we'll go up. Yeah. All right. So we should be here. Do you see WebStorm? Yep, I do. Awesome. Do a quick check, make sure we're all green and we can run tests. Look at that, test pass. Our default TypeScript, just making sure we have a test and a, and a function to make sure we can link the two up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're good to go. What's our first test? Yeah, let's do it. So the first test, um... Rock was one, so why don't we just say um, it uh, returns score for choosing rock? It returns one for choosing rock. Yep. Okay, so what does this look like? Because so round, we just want a round. Because it really is a score for the round. You want to introduce some kind of yeah, I like that idea. Round. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Round dot so you know. a new round. Okay, we'll start there. We're already in failing, I think, just by doing that. So, um, you know, we want to say score. And we want to equal it one. So the only thing here too is how do we know we've chosen rock? But I think that's okay. We can. So let's create class round. Thank you, WebStorm. Yep. And I'm going to move it over and export so that we can kind of keep our production code over there. And then it says we don't have a score method. So there's a score. And I know we want to return a number. I'm going to go ahead and say return zero to get it to compile. And I want to run to see that test fail. Hey, look, one does not equal zero. And now that we know we're, we're off into the races, I'm going to delete our kind of template code. Okay. <clears throat> Clean up import. And you have a failing test, sir. Okay. Yeah, and I was going to say, I think um, maybe since we... we the, I would say this is a little more closer to the user interface layer, but since we're kind of going down this road anyway... I feel like it would make more sense getting to one's a bigger step than if we just consider this a sort of draw, right? Oh, I guess you still get a point for the draw based on your choice. So this is the lowest level tier. Um, so this this would be a round that was a draw where we chose rock. Uh, and that's the lowest score that you could get for a round. Um, okay. So then we need this to pass. I mean, we could just yeah, simple as possible would just be, hey, let's just hard code yep. the one. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And I think that's that? probably a good commit point. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, uh, actually, the lowest score is if you play rock and you lose, because that's one plus zero. So I'll actually give you a score of one. So this is us playing rock and losing. For some reason, I think the, the, the tie is zero just from the my brain. Um, 
but you're right losing is yeah. zero i actually get i've been big into chess and so drawing you get a half a point when you draw in a chess tournament and so to me it's always you get yeah chess is really interesting you get one if you win a half, you each get a half a point if you draw and then you get zero if you lose so i'm used to draw getting partial points like that six and three and zero feel like an odd breakdown but it's okay mm-hmm. Okay, so then the next step would be, I guess, what 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 should be the next test? Like, we could just do the same, but for paper? Paper, yeah, would be two. Yeah, we could, yeah. That's the right. interesting thing here is we, have, we haven't really denoted that we are choosing rock in the first test as well. So we may need to think about what that looks like. Mm-hmm. And to be fair, we haven't had a reason to until right now because we can't have the same, you know, round, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have no we have no input to do an if on. So there's no way for us to do any kind of really simple if statement for what our normal triangulation looks like. So I feel like that means we want to at least and something this simple do we want to use the symbol from the the actual strategy guide or do we want to just like make our own thing it doesn't matter to like me, we can always add that in later oh so you're talking like a or x because there's actually it's two x. symbols right yeah, yeah yeah the right side is different so i think x is rock y is scissors or y is paper sorry X. So that's going to give us a TypeScript error. Yep. And I guess I have to be there. Yeah, let's create constructor. And this is um, our input. I was going to say our input. Yeah, our play. Our yeah, and, I like that. Okay, that's a little better. Yeah. Okay. And it is going to be a string, and we're going to go ahead and just say private because there's nothing here and so what is what is paper i think it's why let's go with why for now we can always change it if i'm incorrect I'm looking at yeah monitor. this immediately makes me want to uh make an enum so that we can yes i think let's start small and maybe that's a nice refactoring step we can go right after this yeah i agree um I'm going to rename default here to be uh, rock, paper, scissors, rocket, rocket, paper, scissors. Apparently. Rocket should always win. <laughs> It'd be really fun to take this to the next level and do add lizard and Spock to it because that's the what the Big Bang Theory did. <laughs> nice. All right, so to te- pass this test as simple as possible, if this dot our play is equal to y, I want to return two. Love it. Yep. And this feels very... Oh, I need to do triple equals. That's actually interesting that it allowed, allowed you to do a assignment in the if statement. That's You learn something new every day. All right. That is our simplest possible. We are green. What do we feel like we want to refactor while I commit this? So I think... Um... Honestly, I already think at this point we're going to get confused what X and Y are. So why don't we immediately uh, go towards um, the refactor? I agree. And if we want to, if we're saying our play, I think we've already came up with the enum name play. Um, I don't know what else you would call it. Maybe from the it's a turn, it's... it's a play. Yeah, yeah. How do we? I think that's what Advent of Code called it, right? If your opponent plays rock. They do say using a hand shape. We could say hand shape. That's a weird way of saying it. That's the way they're saying it. They say rock, paper, scissors is a game between two players. Each game contains many rounds. That's why we got rounds in there. The players each simultaneously choose one of rock, paper, or scissors using a hand shape. Then a winner for that round is selected. If the players choose the same shape, the round instead ends in a draw. So I think shape or hand shape, I think hand doesn't really matter. So maybe shape, which feels weird, but I think it's the language they're using in the the dialogue. So we could try it because then it'd be like shape dot paper is what we'd say. And actually, I think that would be, it wouldn't be terrible. Yeah. All right. Do you want to type or you want me to? 
Oh yeah, I can do it. Um, so let's just start off with just adding it. So export enum shape. And the interesting thing is, is we're having this encoding shape, and there's two, there's two numbers or letters for the same shape. Right. So we have rock is equal to a or x. <clears throat> Yes, and I think that only matters. Actually, I have no idea why that matters. And we, the nice thing is, since we're building this incrementally, we don't have to. Well, you know, maybe that'll impact our design, but right now it's not going to because we're refactoring what we got, um, and we only have rock and paper. Um, okay, cool. So shape rock paper, and now we're going to go in here and just change these. Um, I don't know of an automated way to do this, to be completely honest. But I do know. Yeah, and the enum you made is integer, and we're expecting a string. Actually, you know what? Okay. I think there's, I think there is something we could do here. So one thing, um, when we're in a situation like this, like right now, that I, you know, we could, we could go and make this change, and it wouldn't leave the system broken or you know red for a short amount of time. Um. However, there there is a way we can do this where the system is never broken, uh, which is called a parallel change. And I actually think, I know it's kind of overkill for what, where we're at right now, but this is a good way to demonstrate that. Um, it's also a good way can... to practice, because when we, we practice the simplest case, when, when we are in a more complicated situation, we have a muscle we can go back to, muscle memory. Exactly. So, um, so this is us doing this as a parallel change. And a parallel change is basically an additive change, where, uh, say we have A, and in this case, you know, we have our string, our play, and we want to start moving towards using the enum shape. So what we can do is add shape as a second argument into the round constructor. It's not being read. That's a checkpoint where we could actually commit if we really wanted to. And then we can then move all usages of our play internally in round to now the new shape object. And then once our play is finally not being used anymore, then we can safely delete it. Um, this is a very common pattern, actually, when you're doing like database migration work. But it actually works for code refactoring as well. Um, so here we go. So this is the parallel change version. We would say shape dot rock. So we got to import it, and now we want to change the signature. Um, we know we're going to use it, so I'm going to just put private. Oh, okay, we got it. Back down. Um, one thing to note too is if we actually went and refactored this. We now are passing rock here, which because it's not being read is fine. Um, we got a not a great variable name. Uh, and I think I probably could have updated that a little better, but you want to call this um, our shape? Yeah. For now, we can rename it back if we want. Okay. Um, well, I like then, shape overplay. Yeah, me too. So I think the last thing I would say is just to make this actually relevant. We have... Oh yeah, and this is the weird thing about um notice this when we when we did the when we did the change, it it only thought rock was being used on this enum, but we actually want the whole thing, so we just go like that, and now everything works. I know this is um we haven't really changed much, additive change, but I think this is still a commit point. Um let's run test to make sure. Yep, test pass. Test pass. I'm gonna commit and then why don't we rotate for the additive change? Another so um start. Parallel change for shape enum. All right, take it over. Awesome. So we want to use our shape in here. So instead of, I think it just becomes our shape. And this is going to equal shape.paper. Yep. And now you notice that we are there. And if we run our tests, that's still pass. That's pretty nice. Yeah. We could commit here. Mm hmm We do like micro commits. We are green. We added we changed functionality. Or actually we I mean we refactored and we had no behavior change because our test still passed. So we want to change to use our shape. Push that. Yeah, let's do it. 
And now if we look, our play WebStorm isn't helping us out because it shows it as private, but we are no longer using it. So we can we can right click and hit find usages and there are none. So I can go ahead and command F6 to bring back that nice window. There is this little minus key, but if you look and hover over it, there's a command and a backspace or a command delete. Um, and so you can actually just hit command delete and then you could hit the refactor button and there's also a shortcut for that to hit command enter. And if you notice, it cleans it up and all of our tests are still there in a nice automated way. And we're yeah. green again. Yeah, I like the change. Learning the shortcuts on the change signature command has like saved me so much time because there's so many drop downs if you can just navigate. Uh, because it lets you tab through all the fields that are important as you fill in a new field, which is nice. Yeah, I know uh, so that. This is I know that shortcut. So thank you for explaining that. This is removing our play from round. Very cool. So we have two easy tests. I just did two commits. I'm going to pass it back to you. Let you write the failing test. Yeah, so I think at this point now, we've done a really nice refactor. And I think, why don't we just finish up scoring for choosing? So the, and we'll just do the last one, scissors, if I can uh, spell. Um, do you want to do two steps in one, or do you want to keep it small? I was going to propose a parameterized test. Maybe you write parameterized test for this one, and we can refactor the other two into it. Yeah, let's do it. So it, um, yeah, it. I think we want an array, right? First. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. So it, so shape dot, and then we don't even have scissors. Do I spell scissors? I don't know how to spell anything. That's fine. That's how you spell it. Too many. Oh, it is. See, I just second guess everything about myself. Um, all right. And then create field. Okay. Weird. They call it a field, but that's okay. And then we would say um, for each and then shape. And now here we're going to say it um, returns um, score. I guess, it's, yeah, I guess it needs to be both shape and score. Um, so I'm just kind of going a little ahead here. But okay, so then this is actually going to be an object. It's going to make it look a little bit messy, but that's okay. Um, shape this okay and then we're going to just do a little bit of javascript uh, nonsense here and we're going to we're going to deconstruct this object being passed in and hopefully oh yeah i can put parens around this thank you all right there we go and it's able to infer the type just because it's you know the same so now what we're saying is this is kind of like a test case object um the score is three and the shape is scissor cord so return score for choosing shape and now inside of this test, we can just write expect um, new round um, shape to equal. You need a score on the end of new round. Thank you. Okay. And if we run all these tests, now we see returns three for choosing two. And this is the beauty of uh, number enums. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, we got a failing test. So why don't we get it passing first and then we can... Uh... Talk about the weird enum thing in TypeScript. Yeah. So I think this is going to be yet another simple. Yeah, totally. Uh, our shape is equal to shape dot scissors. I want to return three. Love it. Add our uh, add scoring. For playing tweezers. All right, we're in Greenland. Is there any refactorings? You mentioned we have an oddity for enums. So yeah, I would just say if we go back to the test run, like look at the test runner in the bottom left here on the screen. Um yeah, returns three for choosing two. So the problem is the you know, enums in most languages are represented as numbers. The weird thing in TypeScript, and this is totally an assumption, is when you actually say the enum, it's en it ends up just being a key value pair. So when you say shape.rock, you're actually putting in the number two there. Um, it's not a special type. And shape dot, 
and, and enums are basically just type aliases for that invariant. So basically what, you know, when I write shaped out rock, I'm saying, Oh, the number two can go in there. Um, so, you know, in some languages it's really nice. Uh, the enums, you can actually see their names. So I, I think mm -hmm. the way that I've usually done enums in TypeScript is uh, make them string enums by, you can just basically write equals and just put the string name in there, um, which is overkill, but then you can actually read what it is. Um, so I've seen, I actually don't seen a lot of code bases not do this. And then like they're looking at their logs and now you have to remember what status for means. Um, now, if you look here, we have scissors. Yeah. Instead of two. That's a great like readability thing. Yeah, it's really, it seems to be like, you know, in, in C sharp is where I'm pulling most of this from. Like they have a two string method and it takes the value and, and stringifies it. So you still get the the nice integer kind of reference and things when you store it a little bit less. And then you, when you want to actually serialize it to you reuse readable things, it can be a string and actually readable, which is nice. Uh, so this is definitely different learning TypeScript. Yeah. So I think the next refactor is, I mean, that is a commit point if we want, um, but I think adding on these cases and reducing duplication would be the next step. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And comma that, and comma that. Can we say two is paper? Yep, and one is rock. Let me see, one is rock. And then, so then we can go ahead and do a run. And so now you look at three for scissors, two for paper, one for rock, and we got two for paper and rock. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. Beautiful. That is definitely a commit. We did two small things yeah. there. Get second dash down. And what did we do here? We uh, changed enum to string and refactored to use parameterized tests. Yep. And some might say this parameterized test is like 1 million times more complicated <laughs> than the three one-liners. I think, um, you know, it's really, it's a series of compromises, all design is. Um, I'm comfortable with this type of design, so it doesn't really bother me, but, you know, um, I wouldn't say that parameterized tests are like a silver bullet. There's a lot of times where I've, you know, written parameterized, parameterized tests that are so confusing that no, you, you have no idea what's going on. Um, uh, so just, just a call out. I've seen some people uh, shoot their code bases up with basically parameterized tests and it's just, it's not a silver bullet. Uh, it, it's a tool and it, it's good in a lot of places and it's bad in some. For sure. All right, what is the next test we want to write? Do we want to go back to our disco tree? Yeah, let's do that, because I honestly don't know. Love that idea. That's why we have it. So I feel like we we did this. We did not your score, because there's the outcome as well. And maybe that's the next oh, thing yeah. we do. So basically what we're doing right now is we're scoring a round. And I like that, because we're kind of solving the, the one-th case first. Um, yeah. So, okay. Now I think what we want is not the other player's input, our opponent's input. Love it. Win, lose, draw. Let's do it. And this, I think this is a, a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah. So the other refactor I, I see here is I see these ifs and they're simple, but I, I'd almost like a map lookup. Um, or a method on we, round. Yeah. Because we can encapsulate our shape. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that refactor first. Because I agree. That's a. So uh, what you're saying is line line six, basically the this dot r shape triple equals shape dot paper. So not the return two, but the. I okay. I I see what you're saying. I think there's two parts. There's one. There's. Okay. Never mind. The map lookup would um, negate what my idea was. Let's do the map lookup. That's fine. I think this looks like private our score map. Can we can we call it shape score map? Yeah. Because it really not has nothing to do with our score. It's really just like 
what is the scoring per shape? Yeah, and there's a nice TypeScript way to uh, to enforce this, but I can't actually remember the, the syntax. That's fine. We can figure it out. So this It'll infer it. Shape, shape dot rock and colon, right? Yep, colon one. one. Shape dot paper. Shape dot paper. Two. One, two. That's a period, not a comma. <laughs> and shape dot scissors. Colon three. Yeah, I love this. This is great. And the reason why I like adding the type here is if we would ever add it actually enforces when you have an enum like this. If you ever add an enum, TypeScript would actually kind of throw an error um, and let you know that you need to add something to the missing map. And so I, this is one of the benefits because I use this a lot, uh, why we would yep. want that type. I use it a lot, but I still can't remember the trick with the types. Try to, um, well, let's, let's use it. And then this, uh, once we commit, we'll, we'll play with that type for a minute or two. Yeah. So we're passing. And so this becomes return shape score map when we pass in. Uh, our shape, yeah, this right, our shape, and run the tests, and look, we're passing. Passes. Yep, that's nice. Um, this transformation is we're transforming like conditional logic into data. Um, mm -hmm. so what we literally just did was we made a data mapping, and I think, um, that was a good eye for that. Considering the problem basically defined it as a map, it was saying rock is one, paper is two. I, I think that is the hint that, hey, a map's probably not a bad place to look this up because now you have it all dynamically in one place. If the scoring was to ever change, you just got to update it in one place and you don't have to change conditional logic. You're just changing data, which is a lot safer. Love it. Awesome. So what is our next step? That was a smaller factor that I wanted to do. You said you wanted to play with the type? Well, you were saying, yeah, I mean, if we just go in here for a sec, like TypeScript can identify the type sort of. Um, well, that's not really great. So I think what we can do is say um, shape, score, map. And then if we extract this as an interface, I think I know what it is. I'm pretty sure what you'd say is here, you would say, Shape number. number. Um, and what's this mad about? Computer property name interface must refer to an expression whose type is literal type or unique symbol type. What you're doing is very close. I think it's um like uh, the instance of. I think you might need to wrap it in an instance of or type of. Let's try it. Uh, I think without the expression. Nope, doesn't like that. You know what? Nothing a quick Google search can't use uh, to use uh, enum at TypeScript on an uh, object. And again, the benefit I see of this is if we would ever add another enum, and we know we probably won't unless we want to expand this to Lizard Spock. Um, this would help give us a TypeScript compilation error that we're missing a mapping. And I think that's actually pretty valuable to, to document. And I don't know. That's on my head. That's okay. So, um, yeah, there's a way to do it. I, I think it's not worth the effort right now. So instead of even changing this, I'm just going to give or set hard and boop. go back. Look at that. Going back. All right. So now we were talking about, as the next step, actually scoring um, not just our choice, but the actual um, the win, loss, or draw. Yeah. So do we want to add on to this? Because it sounds like we may be changing score. So or I think we just these maybe three calculate ones... win, loss, or draw? Because we're scoring an entire round right there, mm -hmm. we actually are implicitly saying that that is a, a loss. Mm -hmm. um, which, 
And actually, maybe maybe what would make more sense is instead of us calculating score, because we we could add you know opponent shape in into that. Um, but yeah, we could just say like our shape score. Um, just to keep the to keep it separate, I kind of like that because then we're testing it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I know it's um overkill, but. No, I actually like this because now we're testing this independently of when we're going to be testing the full score. Keeps it simple, keeps it small. Okay, so now let's actually test the real score of a round. Um, and I think lo the losing is the, um, maybe the simplest one because it adds zero. And um, we, we could go right to a parameterized test if we want since we kind of know that's sort of what we're kind of wanting anyway. So we could just do a, a di yeah, basically copy and paste. Um, just make sure there's one test case at first. Okay. And then we probably want opponent shape and our shape. Power shape. Power shape. Yep. Okay. And a root. All right, and now we can just say opponent. Are... Get rid of the... Say that one more time. I uh, uh, just get rid of the S, um, just because we can't have an apostrophe there. So opponent shape. I don't know All why right. that. What was... beat scissors rock? And so we would expect still a score of three because our loss yes. is zero. Yes. Uh, you oh, got to make opponent shape on the deconstructed. Yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, and, and it is three. And so we want to just call score now? Yep. Or total score? Do we want to denote it? Or just do we like score again? Let's uh let's keep with uh, let's you know what let's say total score because it is denoting a little bit more context. We'll go with total score for now and then we can uh see how we feel about yeah. it as we and notice that we're not passing in opponent shape, which I think is fine because we don't have our triangulation test. Yep, totally. Oh, and so, I think we're in a uh, failing test now. Yep. So now you just need to return, for now, to make this pass, return this dot R shape score. Uh, which, okay, I see. We're doing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> and I would argue that that is not uh, the simplest, because you could hard code three right now. I could hard code three, yeah. I think it was just like, we know it. By definition, we're saying the threes because our shape score is three. Um, but it, yes, it's not the simplest. All right. All right. You want to do a quick commit? Yeah, quick commit, and then we can um, do the next test case. So add um, start to test total score. We haven't really implemented anything, I would say. Um, but, okay, so now the next test case would be, I don't know, what is the next simple test case? I mean, let's do the tie. So if we do scissors and scissors, our score should be six. Because at this point, if we if we continue down the loss shape, we're going to just have the same thing as above. So I feel like it's we always probably need score. to do a draw. Yeah. Okay, so two. Oh no. Um. No, so uh, we can six. just do the same thing. Six, and they're both choosing scissors. And now this is yeah. where it fails. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So if I just that. try the simple. Oh. Uh, 
<laughs> what is our simplest? So if, oh, we don't so, even have that yet. That would be why. So I think so we, we don't even be... have the opponent shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm going to have my favorite chain signature. So command N is new line. Mm -hmm. So private. We're going to say opponent. I could sell. Shape. It is of type shape. And the value in this call is, because we have to give it something, is opponent. Man, I can't spell opponent. So this is saying I want a variable called opponent shape. And so the nice thing here is like, hey, we don't have one defined here. But if we look here, we have a private opponent shape that did exactly what we would like. Yep. So we need we do need one there. So what we can do is just put one in a dummy value because we're not really using it. So maybe just shape that rock or whatever you want to put in there. Technically it's not it shouldn't be being used, and we're back to just still having only one test failing. I think that's okay. So I like the idea of this maybe even saying shape.none. Hmm. I'd say uh for we're we're still in red. Um once we get to green, maybe we, we take a look at that. If that's cool. Yeah. Yep. So ooh, first bro. If we're gonna say this dot pony shape is equal to this dot our shape. Return this dot our shape score. Oh no. You have opponent our shape. shape. <laughs> too oh, many O's. Shape. There Last are three? too many O's. All right. So it's super easy, super simple. Yeah, the tie is super easy. Uh, we're going to add because we're green. Add. Some points for tying. Yep. So now we want to win, right? Yes. Um... So if I duplicate here, scissors beats paper. So we want to say paper. And we win at six, and this is three. So we should actually have a score of nine here. Yep. And that is our failing test. And so the thing I do, the one thing that I might actually advocate if this is getting, like you said, uh, if this is getting under, like we don't know what we're testing here, you could quickly say this is lose, tie, and win. But again, mm -hmm. this might be an also a, a reason to not parameterize test. Yeah, yeah, because in, in a way, by putting test. the comment, you know, all comments are apologies, so we're kind of... And, and there's another way we can get around that too by, you know, the test. What's nice is we're, we have a dynamic object here, so we could just add a test name to the thing. But again, the more and more you add to the parameterized test, the more and more you should be like, are, should, are these actually just different tests? I think right now we're not in that state. There's only three tests. But um, yeah, I think that's something to keep in mind for sure. Yeah, it was more of a call out of this is when you start to lose some readability, scannability, and parameterized tests. Yep. Totally agree. Anyway, you have a failing test, and we're playing ping pong. So Let's do it. So now in this case, um, we have nine. So the simplest possible thing here would be we have one failing test. So whatever the input is, we're going to throw into the if statement, and then we're going to return the exact value they want. In this case, this would be this dot opponent shape is scissors, I think. Yep. Um. And no, this, our opponent shape uh, is paper. Our shape is scissors. Okay. Uh, uh, paper. Okay. The scissors. Uh, I, I noticed there's the test we're, we're doing our shape first, and the production code we're saying the opponent shape first, and that's what's confusing me. And that is a good maybe refactor ability point. But for now, let's make a pass. So this is scissors. Okay, and if it's this, we're just going to return nine. 
That's the you ugliest you looking, early. prettier thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I'm gonna add the curly so it doesn't look so ugly. <laughs> no, what is going on here? <laughs> Go in there. All right, it's just ugly no matter which way we slice it, and that's okay because I actually had a suggestion for changing that. Okay, it passes. I think we commit. Go with that. Yep. All right. Calculate. Um. Uh, winning score for paper over scissors. Yeah. So I'm thinking we have a, a few more minutes here. Maybe we do a light refactoring like you mentioned, and then maybe we leave ourselves a, a failing test when we revisit this next week. Like that idea. So my thing right now would be um, this to me. I guess we don't actually have duplication anymore, but it would be nice if we just had a method that said like opponent shape is paper, opponent shape is scissors, and it encapsulated both of those checks um i think you're pointing to maybe even a shape class that's like true because then we could just say this that opponent shape dot is paper mm -hmm. yes yes that's something like class that and that would give us give us some nice things then even i think you could you could the shape score that we have as the map up there it's kind of revealing itself as a part of that shape and not a part of the round. So we could extract class. Can you just add a method to an enum? I don't know. Can you? Uh, I would hope not, just because of how enums in other languages work, but this is TypeScript. <laughs> you can extend it, so yes, you can. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but the thing is, you don't have an instance of it again, so it really, the way you're thinking about it, which I think is the correct way, is... Um, <laughs> So, so you could add it to the static namespace of shape. Because at the end of the day, everything in JavaScript is um, an object, and ob yeah. they're prototypical, so you could, you could add methods to anything. Um, but without going down that rabbit hole, yes, a class would be great. Can we do it in three minutes? Um, maybe. You want to try? Do you want to just play with that extension? See what that looks like. No, it's not going to work because it's not an instance. It is the shape class itself. So we okay. could have like shape dot, you know, is paper and you'd pass a shape into it. We're, we're trying to encapsulate it on the actual class itself. Um, so what we could do is start to, like we're, we're, we're basically, we want to get moved to this. So. Yeah, um, export class, shape class. And then we'll just say shape class and we'll actually put class on it because we're going to probably rename it. Remove or yeah, rename this is it, the know? worst thing in the world, but we're gonna we're gonna rename it to shape once we're done for sure. It's, it's um, better than shape two. <laughs> it is better than shape two. That's what I'm saying. Um, and honestly, we could even test this independently too, which I think. Um, so maybe taking the two ideas of let's end on a failing test, and also this kind of puts us in a place to remember where we wanted to leave off. So, um, um, it is paper. I don't know. I was going to say the quickest one would be actually let's change the, if you want three failing tests, I think that first set of parameterized tests is a shape class test. Because that, that is the noting like that is like this to me is, is a shape class test now. Oh, cause the shape itself could have the score on it. Oh yeah. yeah that's not a yeah. bad idea. So then this would really be like our API we'd want is new shape and it's just shape at that point and um, then score um two equal score and now a new shape is not imported so we can oh sorry shape, shape class class uh, that was what i was trying to type in all right and i mean let's get it so it's compiling and then we can yes yes we gotta get it to compile actually this is yeah, um honestly. This is a pretty... I, I'm fine just implementing this. It'll take two seconds. I was going to say, yeah, copy-paste at this point, right? Boop. 
So I'll put it on here. And then, yeah, copy paste. We're kind of moving logic. Again, this is sort of a parallel change, I would say. We're. Oh, yeah, because we're not using shape class. It's totally parallel. Yeah. So we're duplicating logic, bad, but um, it's making it so we're not breaking the system. Good. It's um, this dot shape, not this dot our shape. Ta da! Now, no failing test. Now, no failing tests. Now, I think uh, you could write your is paper, or we can continue to refactor real quick. Yeah, I think migrating everything over is super easy, uh, actually. So I'm fine just doing that real quick. Uh, I think commit and then do that. And actually, you know what? Last time we we uh, tried chasing the dragon for like 15 or 20 minutes. Let's not do that. Let's actually <laughs> just write the one failing test of his paper, and then we can uh, we can leave with yeah. that. Um, okay, yeah. perfect. So uh, start or copy over score logic onto new shape class. Love that idea. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, we have the shape classes up here or shape tests. So I'm going to just say it is paper shape. And this will be our failing test where we say expect new shape class shape dot uh, paper is paper um, to that equal or to be true. And then we just need to implement this. And I'm just going to have a return false. I'd rather end on a failing test on a compilation issue. <laughs> no, yeah, totally. All right. So go ahead and put the X for ignore. Yes. So yeah, there's two things we could do here. We could commit and push this right here, which then would be like the equivalent of a pushing a failing build. So with um, Mocha Chai, by putting X here, we're actually just ignoring the test, which is called out here. You're, and um, when you're running the test all the time, it's you're like, oh, why, why are we... Uh... Yeah, here it is. Why are we skipping a test? So it kind of brings your attention. The reason why we're trying to end on a failing test is so we don't have to remember where we left off. We could just go right to it. So, um, before I forget, anything else, I think you want to that was, yeah. I mean, you can commit this, but I think let's get out of that shape class because I, I think if we rename that enum to hand shape, like we started, and then it's the shape that wraps the hand shape, that kind of denotes maybe it's a little bit easier and we get out of the shape class terrible name that we have. Is that at least a step yeah, in the right direction? I'm finding one to do that quick. Yeah. Hand shape. Love it. It's a good idea. And then this just becomes a shape. Yep. And will we need hand shape by the end? Maybe. No idea. Useful now. But We're I like still that. Still in the same state. Oh, yeah. On. Anytime we have that class. <laughs> or I interface. Yeah. Those are. Anytime that happens, you really should ask, like, I'm I'm missing something here. Um, now, we kind of got around it by just, uh, <laughs> you know, prefixing, prefixing with a hand, which is not, I would say it's a better solution than slapping I or slapping class onto the name. Um, but I think it's a smell, and I think we can address it next time. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching and tuning in. And... Check us out next week as we continue this scoring of rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.